So where we are now, when you listen to the members of parliament, through their various submissions that they have made, you come to a conclusion that our country is in a state of entropy. And earlier, I defined what the state of entropy is. This is a dis some disorderly manner in which things occur in order. So we are in a state of entropy where everything is happening in some disorderly manner, in some order. We are in a country today where the rule of law, where the laws are disrespected, they are disrespected in preference for policy. It must be noted here that laws are superior to policies. Police policies are subordinate to laws. You have a Minister of Agriculture coming on the floor. Members of Parliament bring it to his attention that the selection of the mode of procurement of fertilizers this year being uh, a direct bidding was inappropriate but because the surrounding circumstances do not warrant that kind of procurement. He comes up and says, we have decided because it's now manifesto. So it's now the UPND manifesto against or versus the law. This is the country that we're in. We're in a country now where even whereas the, the law provides for all controlling officers to give information to Auditor General within a specified and stipulated period. We have records that show that the last time Auditor General requested for information from the Permanent Secretary from Agriculture was about three months ago to date the PS of Agriculture has refused to submit information to the uh, 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 Auditor General. The work of the Auditor General, the audit opinion, the opinion of the Auditor General is supposed to be given by a certain date around May. And the Auditor General is to present that report to Parliament around September. Colleagues, take interest to note that most of the work that we do here at Parliament emanate from the Auditor General's report. There are three accountability committees that depend on the Auditor General's report. So you can imagine what is going to happen to the work of Parliament and the work of these committees if the Auditor General is unable to deliver a credible audit report. And that's where we're headed. Because deliberately and by some design, the PS has been instructed not to provide information to the Auditor General. Had that not been the case, we would have seen some administrative action coming from Secretary to Cabinet or indeed Secretary to Treasury being the two people that supervise permanent secretaries. But this sec permanent secretary from Ministry of Agriculture with impunity has refused to submit documents to Auditor General as provided by law. Colleagues, we say we're in a state of entropy eh, because I remember, uh, honorable colleagues, I think most of you must have uh, watched that movie. I remember it very well. It was a movie entitled Going Nowhere Slowly. Yeah. And, and I think that's where we are as a country. <laughs> we, we are going nowhere slowly. You know, because it, 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 these are some of the examples that we are giving. It was just yesterday that uh, there was an audio, a video that went viral. This video uh, had senior members of the UPND incarcerated at some police station in Wapula. And they were complaining. They were complaining about discrimination. Saying some of their colleagues that were involved in the same scandal, in the same transactions, were not arrested together with them because of the regions where they came from. Colleagues, these are not words coming from us. I'm sure most of you must have had recourse to that particular video. And yet the president and his ministers would want to tell the Zambian people that they detest regionalism. If you listen to that audio very carefully, the people that spoke in that, in, in that video spoke with details. They gave out names of people that should have been incarcerated together with them, but were not in incarceration. And yet we have come on the floor of the house with lists on appointments. We have raised issue with the non-compliance 
with Article 259 of the Constitution, where those that make appointments, including the President, is mandated to follow the provisions of the Constitution, which require that there must be regional diversity in appointments. When we raise these issues, people come up and call us tribalists. And yet members of their own party, of the UPND party, raised issues to do with regionalism. Police officers involved in the Sujilite scandal merely transferred. Party officials involved in Sujilite merely you know, uh, sent away, not incarcerated. The people that were in that video went further to complain about some mining activities that are happening in some parts of this country and have continued to, to, to operate illegally. And yet similar activities in other parts are being stopped. So colleagues, the past one, two weeks we've been debating uh, you know, the president's speech where he came to give progress on the implementation of values and principles. And one of those values and principles included non-discrimination. We want to call upon government, in particular His Excellency the President, that there must be a equal and fair treatment of citizens. Let them deal with the matter that um, was, uh, arose in that audio from Rapula. We do not want the UPND to bring division in our country. We want to preach unity. UPND should put its house in order and ensure that those officials that are talking about regionalism, those officials who are fighting based on tribe, are brought to book. If at all what they're saying is true, that should serve as a lesson for those that are in leadership, be it the police or in indeed party hierarchy, to do things fairly and treat members equally. So colleagues, there are a number of things that uh, have been discussed uh, uh, today, uh, but like I said, I started by defining uh, the state of entropy, uh, the disorderly manner in which things occur in order. And that's where we are as a country, going nowhere slowly. That's where we are as a country. So we've been told about uh, corruption, especially in the procurement of fertilizers. It's not the first time. This is actually the third procurement that has happened under the UPND. The first one, the moment they came into power in 2021, they procured fertilizer worth $50 million. They procured fertilizer ordinarily costing $35 million, and they paid $50 million. We raised issues around that transaction. We called upon the SEC to investigate. There's never been a report from the Anti-Corruption Commission. The second procurement happened last year. We all know it was uh, through some selective tender. Six companies were selected. When we asked government to provide profiles of those companies that were selected for that tender, the tender was cancelled and later awarded to other friendly companies. So this tender that is out now is the third one. Colleagues, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to know and be able to see the corruption in this fertilizer procurement. Direct bidding, there are certain conditionalities or circumstances that must exist before you opt for direct bidding. And I'm happy that uh, our honorable members were here. They surveyed the law, they pronounced the law, and it's very clear that the circumstances surrounding the procurement of fertilizers this time around do not warrant direct bidding. Secondly, it's a well-known fact that the companies that have been picked for this direct bidding are friendly companies, politically exposed companies. And yet, our president, on every platform, is talking about the fight against corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to be serious. If we're going to fight corruption, we have got to be serious. And like my, my, my colleague from Alumezi said, there is no fight against corruption whatsoever. I also want to comment on the issue of violence, as uh, was earlier discussed by Honorable Kampambi. The UPND have okay. been going out there to say they've ended Kadarism. And some people actually do believe they've ended Kadarism. I want to take you back. Back in 2021, we all saw what happened at the court when Honorable Shaka Fusu and Mao Sampa we are appearing before court to defend their petitions. Their witnesses were beaten in full view of the police and the minister right at the court. 
It's not long ago that police officers at Chisamba were beaten right at the police. A district administrative officer in Kasama was beaten in an office almost undressed by UPND cadres. In Kasama. Just the other week, police were beaten at Kasama police. And when we brought the matter before the minister, he said he was not aware. The very following day, the UPND were apologizing for that incident. So we have all these examples. In Chisamba, my brother is there, uh, Christopher uh, Chibuye. He survived a gunshot right at the police by cadres. In Kitwe, the people that were beaten three days ago are the ones that have been arrested. And yet the UPND want to come and tell you that they've ended uh, cadreism. A Debs in Kafue was beaten by cadres. And they are doing this with impunity. Lusangazi, Luangwa. Now I'm told the Minister of Community Development, my dear sister, was actually harassed and, you know, by, by cadres at her office. And somebody wants to say they've ended cadreism. The only reason why you are able to see the UPND as being violent is because we told our cadres under PF to restrain themselves and not react. Had they been reacting, it would have been our cadres would have been arrested and accused of being violent. But because we told them, do not hit back. Just stand back and look away. So now these people are, are, are exposed. So we are dealing with a party uh, that is full of uh, uh, cadreism and violence. And colleagues, I want to tell you this. Most of the violence that we have experienced the past one week or two has just been for one reason. Because the true size of the UPND has been exposed. Remember that the UPND won elections, not because they had a larger membership, but because the number of sympathizers on that day in 2021 turned up, turned against the PF and voted for the UPND. But the UPND now are having to come to terms with the truth that yes, they are in power, but they are a very small party. They are a very small party, and there's no, there's no apologies about it. Begin to interrogate what happened, first of all, Independence Day on 20, uh, October 2022. Everywhere you went countrywide, there are people were outnumbered by Party of the Front. Come to Women's Day, they were outnumbered by our women. Youth Day, they were outnumbered by our women. The question that you must ask, all the genuine members of the UPND should have turned up to go and march and show that they are proud of their party. So now, realizing this, because they were busy uh, basking in joy, believing that they've got 2.8 million people that voted for them. We kept on warning them. Yes, you may have gotten that vote, though we have our own doubts, but the people that came out to vote, most of them were not your members. They were just people that were disgruntled, that were unhappy with us. Now, their true size is showing. And because they realize they're a very small party, they tend to violence and uh, tend to you know, uh, uh, you know, harass our members. We want to call upon the Minister of, Justice, uh, Minister of Home Affairs. <coughs> Honorable Jack Mwimbu, uh, you cannot continue pretending. You have cadres who are violent, cadres who are causing violence. It's time that you put your act together, Minister, and put that to an end. Zambians will not sit back helplessly watching your cadres busy beating up people with impunity. That cannot continue. That's a message to my, my, my dear colleague, fellow counsel Jack Mwimbu. He has got to put his act together and ensure that he ends uh, in, in Okadarism. Yeah, so I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been, it's been a long day. Uh, my strong message really was that uh, uh, we are a country that is going nowhere slowly. Uh, we are a country that is, uh, you, you know, uh, experiencing all this confusion. Otherwise, how can you explain a situation where on youth day, the president appears before the youths who are waiting for some inspirational message from the president and all they hear from him is kutumpo <laughs> using unpalatable language on that platform that is because we're in a state of entropy we're in a state of entropy where, thi where, some, where things are happening in some disorderly manner 
but in some order. This is exactly where we are. And I think it's high time that uh, you know, we, 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 we called for a national endeavor. And the UPND need help, colleagues. The UPND need help. And that help can only come through a national endeavor where stakeholders and citizens come together to try and help our friends find some solutions. We have waited. It was wait for our budget. Their budget came, nothing happened. Wait for the IMF package. The IMF package came, nothing. So, but for how long will we continue waiting? So I think the way forward, we've taken a proactive approach. Uh, we will soon be engaging with, with um, our owner, the vice president, uh, you know, that uh, through members of parliament and other st stakeholders, including uh, party functionaries from our side, a, a, you know, a, a national endeavor should be called so that we can help the UPND uh, to put this country back on track where things should begin to happen in a predictable manner, in some orderly manner. And I think that way, uh, for this country that we love, we should be able to uh, take it forward. With those few remarks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I should uh, thank you most sincerely, honorable members of parliament and members of the press, for your time and efforts that you've made in ensuring that uh, our people out there are informed of what is happening and uh, indeed uh, uh, told about the many shortcomings you know, that uh, this government is, is, is having. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,